Hey church family, I want to share with you a little bit from what has become my favorite book this month. It's called One Blood by John M. Perkins. He is a black pastor and a senior leader in an evangelical church in America. This book, One Blood, is subtitled Parting Words to the Church on Race and Love. And this is a book that our staff and board are currently reading through, and I'd recommend it to you. One of the things that I love about this book is what the author John Perkins identifies as the starting point in this whole conversation about race and reconciliation. He identifies it as the key to winning the battle. Let me share with you a little bit of what he writes. Perkins says, since the beginning of time, Satan has not changed his approach. He hasn't changed anything. He hasn't needed to. The poison that he used in the garden still works today. We've each felt his fiery darts, the darts of prejudice, discouragement, apathy, complacency, and we can certainly see how his darts have crippled the church. There's more working against the church coming together across ethnic and cultural lines than just our personal prejudices. The enemy has stalked his claim on keeping us divided and keeping us from trusting one another. He knows that what Jesus said before he went to Calvary was true, that if we're one, the world will believe. The devil believes God's word. I wish we did. He's launched a fierce attack, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Some people don't believe we should talk about the devil. They think that by talking about him, we give him more power than he deserves. I don't think it makes sense to go into a battle and not know who you're fighting against. Well, Perkins continues and says, the key thing in this battle is prayer. In fact, the chapter I've been reading from is titled, Prayer, the Weapon of Our Warfare. And in this chapter, Perkins says, in this battle for biblical reconciliation, we don't go against the enemy with swords, spears, and javelins. We don't fight with small stones and slingshots. We pray, we pray, we pray, because the battle is the Lord's. In this chapter, Perkins suggests several things for which we can be praying. He begins by saying, pray for his will to be done. He says, pray for our hearts, pray for our brothers and sisters, pray for our organizations that are fighting for reconciliation. And finally, pray for the church. It's God's hope for the world. When facing problems as huge as the divisions that plague our nation right now, as I was reading the challenge that John Perkins gives us, I was reminded of the words of Hudson Taylor who said, it is possible to move men through God by prayer alone. He reminds us that there is tremendous power in prayer. And that's why we're inviting you to join us for a day of fasting and prayer for our nation this Sunday, November 1st. We'll be praying for the upcoming election. We'll be praying for restoration and reconciliation. We'll be praying for the next generation. And we'll be praying for anything for which you would like prayer. We're encouraging all of you to fast and pray this Sunday. And then as many of you are as available to join us for a Zoom prayer meeting this Sunday at 3 o'clock, we'd love to have you be part of that as well. And if you'd like to learn how to be part of that Zoom prayer meeting, just reply to this email and I'll send you the details. I hope to have all of you praying with us this Sunday, November 1st.